section we're going to cover is connective tissue. So this is our second type of tissues in the histology chapter we'll be looking at. You can abbreviate it CT if you like. Well, some characteristics of connective tissue are that it's a major structural component of the body. Meaning that much of, much of the body is built with different kinds of connective tissue. All right. Another way we could describe connective tissue would be to give you some examples of these. For instance, structures like fascia, which is this covering in between and around muscles and kind of holding the skin to the muscles and the muscle to the bone so you don't fall apart. Um, bone is an example of a connective tissue. Cartilage is one you may be familiar with. How about ligaments? They are connecting bone to bone. Here's one you might not know, blood. That's a liquid connective tissue. So those are just some examples of the types of things that um, really connect one thing to another or hold us together so that our body can move around and complete its cellular function. Connective tissue is made mostly of things between the cells, or we would call intercellular. So between the cells, that's my little abbreviation for between there. Elements, meaning the things that fill in the spaces between the cells uh, with very few, for the most part, very few actual cells in between. So when we think of, oh, here's a tissue and there's a bunch of little cells lined up like this, that would look more like epithelial. Remember, we'd put a little nucleus in there and put them on a basement membrane. There's not any space in between the cells that you could see here. But for connective tissue, we're going to have a cell here and one here and then another type of thing here. And we can see that there's lots of space in between the cells. And so that's what that means. And there's a special name for that space. It's called the matrix. All right, so this is the extracellular matrix and we'll get to the different parts uh, of connective tissue. So that space, I'm gonna leave that as blue, between cells, lots of it. And I'm just putting some arrows to indicate lots of space. Another thing that connective tissue has is it's really made often of non-living components. So it's classified, meaning how we categorize it, by its non-living versus its living, whereas a cell, one of these little guys would be a cell, okay, and that would be living, but the stuff in between it would be the non-living. So it's classified by its non-living components, often meaning what's all this blue stuff, what's in all the blue stuff, or um, there's some fibers in there, kind of like threads. Those are not living. They're more of a production from one of these cells. So classified by its non-living components versus actual cell types, or just let's say versus actual cells. So what is our connective tissue made of? Well, let's say connective tissue is made of really two things, two uh, larger categories. One is called the extra cellular matrix. And you might see this abbreviated as ECM sometimes. 
don't tend to use abbreviations uh, when we're talking about this in a written format, but you might see it as ECM, so I wanted to point that out. The extracellular matrix is made of two things. It's made of something called a ground substance. And even from that word, you can think of it as the background substance. But it's not unimportant, but it's just a way to think about it. So the background substance, it's kind of like a gel, like or similar to a gel. The other thing that extracellular matrix contains are fibers. And the fibers are sort of thread-like. And just like threads, there are different widths and strengths. Now, let's look at three types of fibers. There are three types we're going to see, three types of fibers in the ECM. And the first one, I'll just do these as A, B, and C. The first one is called collagen. You may have heard of collagen. Collagen injections, um, collagen for strength, collagen tears, fibro, uh, anyway. So think about all of the things that we've heard of the words collagen. You hear about it in lotions, all kind of advertising things uh, have to do with collagen that you'll see, healthcare products. But collagen, I want you to think of as the strongest type of fiber. This is the strongest. All right, and so in that regard, it means it's for strength and it's very thick. So whenever you see a thick fiber, uh, think strength, think collagen. A second type of fiber in the extracellular matrix is elastin. And that probably sounds like a word that you know, elastic, and that's exactly what it does. It stretches, so it's for stretch. Uh, and then it recoils, which means it can go back to its original shape uh, we hope sometimes elastic loses its shape, you know, uh, in the waistband of pants and that kind of thing. But in the body, it tends to hold out a little better. So let's think those are thin. Those are thin. So we've got collagen is nice and thick, and then elastin is thinner. Uh, and then our third type is a, a little different. It's called reticular. Reticular fibers. And the word reticular means net or to retain something. So this is a mesh or a thin mesh like, let's say mesh, thin type of web. And this is very much associated with something called a stroma, which we'll go into when we look at the uh, types of tissue that have stroma. But stroma is a word that you can begin to associate with reticular, with reticular fibers particularly. Now, the other part besides the extracellular matrix, we know there have to be cells. Okay, and so we've got extracellular matrix and the cells. Uh, something has to make all of these fibers. And so most of the fibers are made by things called fibroblasts, fibroblasts. And so when you think about a fibroblast, we'll think, oh, they make these fibers. Fibroblasts are the cells and connective tissue which make fibers. And it tells you that by their name. The word blast you may not be familiar with, but blast means to begin, build, make, anything like that that you want to put. Blast is the beginning or the making of something. You think about making a highway through a mountain, you have to blast through the mountain, so it's the beginning. Fibroblasts are the cells in the connective tissue which make the actual fibers. Now, there are other cells like uh, osteocytes. These are just other examples. Osteocytes. Osteo means bone. Os means bone. There are adipocytes, which you may have heard of adipose. So there's an adipocyte, another type of connective tissue 
is blood, and so there are red blood cells. So, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just giving you more example, but most of the cells you're gonna see in connective tissue are fibroblasts because they make up uh, the fibers and the fibers make a majority of the extracellular matrix. So let's try to divide this just a little bit with some color. We have extracellular matrix, or the ECM, and then we have cells. Within the extracellular matrix category is ground substance and fibers. And then within the cellular category are the various cells that are present in connective tissue, fibroblasts being uh, predominant, and then other cells you're gonna see are, for instance, osteocytes, adipocytes, red blood cells. I'm gonna add chondrocytes here. Chondro meaning cartilage. So those are ways you can think about connective tissue. Let's examine the classes of connective tissue. So we would call this the classes of connective tissue. There are three. The first one is called connective tissue proper, and I am going to abbreviate here, connective tissue proper. The second class is going to be structural. Another way to think about connective tissue is structurally. So structural connective tissue. And then the last wave, the third final wave, will be fluid, fluid connective tissues. If we're just looking at these words, you can think of proper as going to have a couple of categories in it. Fluid, we can immediately call that one blood. So blood is going to be our fluid connective tissue. Structurally, if you're thinking about what holds the body together, uh, when we think of structural, maybe when you're new at this, you're thinking of the architecture of the body might be uh, bone. So bone, and go, going along with bone is going to be cartilage. And we're going to explore these uh, in another video where we look at the types of bone and the types of cartilage. Uh, and also, we're going to look at connective tissue proper and all of the categories of that. But let's just list them here. There's two types of connective tissue proper. The first one is going to be called loose, loose connective tissue proper. I'm just going to put a P right there. So loose connective tissue proper and dense connective tissue proper. All right, and under the category of loose, we're going to have a couple of uh, different kinds. There will be areolar, areolar or areolar. We'll have reticular, reticular. Remember, reticular was those reticular fibers, and that means like to form a net or to retain something. And then we'll have uh, adipose, uh, adipose, I'm sorry, adipose, adipose. Under dense, think of things that are packed in close together. We're going to have something called dense, regular. And if there's a regular, there is a dense, irregular. Dense, irregular. There's also another type of tissue called elastic. We'll call it elastic dense. Okay, now just to, since we're doing that with loose and dense, I'm just going to write in over here the two types of bone are going to be compact and spongy, which you may have heard of, also referred to as trabecular. And then cartilage is going to have three types of cartilage. Um, and we can think about cartilage in terms of hyaline, elastic cartilage, which is different from elastic dense connective tissue proper, and then also fibro cartilage. 
right, and that'll do it for the classes of CT. Now we're going to look at examples of each of these. We're going to draw a little bit and maybe uh, throw in some characteristics there as long as um, you don't get too overboard with this because we'll note that in the lecture portion of the class we'll also cover these. This is just more of a guide to help you uh, begin to organize your lecture material as well as uh, looking at the various features or characteristics of each of these under a microscope. So we're going to draw them so that you have something to compare your drawings to with the actual tissue samples that you see in lab.